Hi everyone. Today I would like to share with you about configure security policy by using Azure Security Center. Who am I? I am Anxia Microsoft MVP. Here with my editor, if you got any question regarding about Microsoft technology, you can contact me via my Twitter. If you want to learn more about Azure security tutorial, you can go to techconnect.io. For today's agenda, the first one, we will configure endpoint protection. Second is configure centralized policy management by using Azure Security Center. The third one is configure just-in-time virtual machine access by using Azure Security Center. Let's start with the first topic in, uh, in this video. Focusing just on the endpoint recommendation, what does Azure Security Center report as issue? By using the information under endpoint protection ISO, you can identify a plan to address any issue identified. Security Center reports the following endpoint protection issue. Endpoint protection not installed on Azure VM. A support anti-malware solution is not installed on this Azure VM. Endpoint protection not installed on non-Azure computer. A supported anti-malware solution is not installed on the non-Azure computer. Endpoint protection how is so. Signature out of that. An anti-malware solution is installed on this VM and computer, but this solution does not have the latest anti-malware signature. Second, no real-time protection. An anti-malware solution is installed on this VM and computer, but it's not configured for real-time protection. The service might be disabled or security center might be unable to obtain the status because the solution is not supported. Not reporting. An anti-malware solution is installed but not reporting data. The last one is unknown. An anti-malware solution is installed, but either the status is unknown or is status or is reporting an unknown error. Implement the recommendation. Security Center presents the endpoint protection issue as a recommendation. If your if your environment is determined by a value they mean to be vulnerable to anti-malware anti-malware track. This recommendation will be displayed under recommendation and under compute. To see endpoint protection issue dashboard, follow the compute workflow. Okay, now we go to a second topic in this video. Configure centralized policy management by using Azure Security Center. By default, all prevention policy are turned on. Prevention policy and recommendation are tied to each other. In other words, if you enable a prevention policy such as OS vulnerability that enable recommendation for that policy, in most situations, you want to enable all policy, even though some might be more important to you than others. Depending on the Azure resources you have deployed, the following is a generated list of the type of recommendation. The, the recommendation help provide full visibility into the security health of your environment. The first one, system update. Achieve a daily list of available security updates and critical updates from Windows Update or Windows Server Update services. Second, OS vulnerability. I analyze OS configuration daily to determine issues that might make the virtual machine vulnerable to attack. Endpoint protection. 
recommends employee protection to be provided provisions for all Windows VM to help identify and remove virus, spyware, and other malicious ma software. This encryption recommends enabling this encryption in all VM to enable to enhance data protection at rest. Network Security Group recommended by recommended that Network Security Group be configured to control inbound and outbound traffic to VM have public endpoint in addition to checking that and network security group has been configured. This policy assess inbound security groups web application firewall. Extend network protection beyond network security groups which are built in to Azure Security Center where discover and deployment for which uh, next generation firewall is recommended and allow you to provision a virtual appliance. Vulnerability assessment recommend that you install vulnerability assessment solution on your virtual machine. SQL auditing and threat detection recommends that you enable the auditing of access to Azure SQL database for compliant and advanced threat detection for investigation purpose. SQL encryption recommends that you enable encryption at rest for your Azure SQL database, associate payout, and transaction log file. This helps prevent your data from being reliable even if, if it is breached. Azure Security Center may recommend that you add a next generation firewall and GFW from a Microsoft Banner increase your security protection. Now we come to the third one. Yeah, the third one, third topic in this video, configure vulnerability scanning and policy. Azure Security Center provide you with a centralized view of your Azure resources and their activity security step. It provides integrated security monitoring and policy management across your Azure subscription help detect threat that might otherwise go unnoticed and work with a broad ecosystem of security solutions. These solutions are delivered through the following capability prevention, detection and response. For prevention, security center monitor the state of your Azure resources based on how you configure the security policy for your organization, application, and data. Detection. Security Center automatically collect and analyze security data from your Azure resources, the network, and partner solutions like anti-malware and firewall. It takes advantage of global threat intelligence from Microsoft product and services and Microsoft Digital Client Unit the Microsoft Security Response Center and external feed. Respond. Security Center provide you with prioritized security and incident alerts. It offer insight into the source of attack and any impact resources along with suggestions for how to stop the current attack and help prevention, help prevent future attack. A uh, security policy is defined the set of control that are recommend for resources with the specific subscription or resource group. In Security Center, you define policy for your Azure subscription resources group according to your company's security needs, the type of application or sensitivity of data in each subscription. For example, resources used for development or testing might have different security requirements that resources used for production application. Likewise, applications that use regulated data like personal identifiable information might require higher level of security security policy that are enabled in Azure Security Center drive security recommendation and monitoring to help you identify potential vulnerability and mitigate threat that enables in security center drive 
security recommendation and monitoring to help you identify potential vulnerability and mitigate threat. When you enable security center and data collection, all the security policy are enabled by default. The policy are inherited from the subscription down to the resources group. However, you can control the security policy individually at the resource group level. In the following figure, some of the resources group have inherited inheritance turned on and some are set to be unique, which means that their security policy setting might be different from those of the subscription. To modify a security policy at the subscription level or resources group level, you need to be an owner or contributor for that subscription. At the subscription level, you have two configuration items. The first, first one is data collection. Set this to on or off for the VM in the subscription. Data collection includes the daily scanning of all supported VMs for security monitoring and recognition. It also includes the correction of security events for analysis and check protection. Storage account. Set these two where to store the security data. If you don't choose a storage account for each region, one will be created for you. For security reasons, the data that collected is logically logically isolated from other customer data. Now we come to the last topic in this video. Configure just in time virtual machine access by using Azure Security Center. When it comes to managing Azure VM, administrator usually use remote desktop or secure shell to remotely connect to and manage them. The initial method to get access to this VM was remote desktop protocol RDP boost force attack. A boost force attack consists of checking all possible username and uh, or password until the correct is found. The, this is not the most sophisticated form of attack, but it relatively simple and perform and given enough time to uh, enough time it work to groom the remote desktop protocol brute force attack. You can attack multiple measures such as disabling the puppy IP address and using one of these connection methods. Point to site VPN, site to site VPN, Azure Express Route. Require two factor authentication using complex password. Limiting the amount of time that the port are open, Azure Security Center implement the last method by using just-in-time access, virtual machine access, which allow you to help secure remote access to one or more virtual machine. Just-in-time access, virtual machine access, reduce the exposure time of privilege and increasing increase your visibility into the use of privilege account. When you enable just-in-time virtual machine access of, for your VM, you can create a policy that determines the spot to help protect. How long port should remain open? And the approved IP address that can access to this port. The policy helps you stay in control of what user can do when they request access. Requests are logged in the Azure Activity Log, so you can easily monitor and audit access. The policy will also help you quickly identify the existing VM that have just in time access, enable and virtual machine where just in time access virtual machine access is recommended. That's all for today. If you got anything you can fit me or you want to no other Microsoft technology, also you can do it. Other than that, you can find today video blog at dev.to slash That's all for today. Thank you very much.